So this is a, a fairly good example of what we're growing pretty much over the whole farm now. Um, we're on about a 30 day round in late November. Um, we'd be even longer if we hadn't taken all our hay paddocks out. It's really just compiling ahead of us. And what's showing is that the, the quality in the species is phenomenal. We don't end up topping or anything, even if it, the pasture gets quite long, you can see the cows there and you know, they're cleaning it off really well. Um, so the significance of this is get the soil right, the pastures come along and you grow a lot more. So in our eyes, what we do is we will, we've got trial pots down about what we're doing in the future, what we see that issues are or could be, and we try different products and see what's happened. And so from year to year, where the farm is and where our trial plots are, we can actually predict the outcomes of what we're going to do next year. Now last year I made the statement on the trial plots, if we grew what was in the trial plot on the rest of the farm when we applied those products, we would grow 25% more feed. And I'm fairly confident that that's actually what happened. Um, it's bloody phenomenal. So it's a little bit of an embarrassment, but it's bloody great fun. And I'm not concerned about the quality of the feed, it's just going to keep growing. and um, yeah, we'll make some hay, but if it gets really long and well over my knees and past my bum, well, cows will still eat it, so we'll be happy enough. A completely different approach to farming. So, the cows are slightly indignant because we've come down to the fence line and they've all come up to say hello. And, yeah, they're really hungry by the look of it, you can see, can't you? And maybe they're indignant because they actually want to get across the other side of the fence and this is why they're indignant um, and the quality of the pasture and feed that they want to come onto and the dandelions, yarrow, coxfoot, goosegrass, ryegrass of varying types, plenty of red clover, dandelions, you name it. Um, and we didn't have to plant any seed to get that either. Oh yes, I know darling. So things are going pretty good. The calves are going really well at the moment and yeah, the bull's just tidying up the odd um, second time round cow so it should be pretty good calving next year and uh, we're going to go through the process of showing you the tests and some of the results of what's happening to create this little bit of um, what I call farming heaven. Farmers, we're really lacking a lot of information that we require to make bloody good decisions and over my farming career, 30 odd years, I've actually managed to get trained in certain aspects of soil science and understand how it works out how to get this information that you require and put it in practice. So like we do a 300 mil probe and we're doing that using a GPS to show exactly where we take that probe from. It gives us a total amount of nutrient that we've got in the soil so that we know all the nutrients are there and we do an available test too which shows us what you'd normally see on your soil test. With that, you can actually calculate what's going on, what you're really short of, and what you need to apply to remedy the situation. Now, as you can see, we're in a volcanic ash here in Waihi, and in our country, you know, aluminium's the enemy. Um, and using superphosphate on it's just bloody dangerous because it just brings out more aluminium. But what's happening is we change our amendments to suit what's required, like the right types of biology, um, different forms of silica to get rid of that aluminium toxicity, we're actually growing topsoil right the way down. Now our topsoil used to come to about here, so we've actually grown quite considerably. Now we do a Brookside soil audit, and with that we can get the full range of minerals and nutrients that are in there, this is the available one, but on the total side of things, what happens is that we can actually do the carbon testing as well. So this tells us how much carbon's in there. And that's quite simple because you take the sample, you times it by the, the carbon content, by the bulk density. And that bulk density then across the area of the farm that you're doing. So on this piece here, at the, what we call the front of the farm, over the last three years, we've accumulated 30 tonnes of actual carbon per hectare. So it's like bringing a truck and trailer unit of carbon and dumping it on the soil. So that's actually calculated out to um, some ridiculous figure around $8,000 per hectare at the present um, stage that, you know, to claim back has a significant factor in 
what we're actually doing. You know, they, they can't claim off us that we're not actually accumulating carbon or using carbon and putting it in the atmosphere. We're actually getting it back. But the other, you know, thing that we need to look at is all this starts to make sense because if you look at the pastures, you know, if you look down here, you know, these are pastures that are just multi-species by themselves. They're growing at a phenomenal rate and they're incredibly healthy. Now, the interesting part of that is that if we take a herbage test from these types of pastures, we actually get a really low nitrate level in the nitrogen level in the pastures. Like in up here, we got 2.8% actual N. Now, from that, what happens is that if you look at what the animal's digesting in a gut, it's actually getting true protein, not non-protein nitrogen, which causes the methane to be emitted from the cow. So straight away, we're on a winner. We've got carbon in our soil. We've got animals that are under stress with nitrate poisoning. And we know exactly where we've done it. So we come back here next year. And I've got all the facts and the figures from those tests. Now there, this way, farmers can actually keep all the information of their farm about their farm, know what they're doing, what they have to do next year. And there is a considerable um, outcome that comes from this. So like from last year, we expect to have grown 25% more feed and it's certainly showing. We can't keep up with it. Now these are uh, done on what we've done trials in the past. We can replicate that and go, okay, these are the things that we found out. We're missing nutrients. We're missing this. We need to put that on. If we do that, it showed in our trial plot, we'll get a massive increase. Okay, so if we look at what we did with the soils, we got them in balance and the type of pasture that grew from them are exceptionally healthy and the animals are doing really well from it. We see the nitrates in the pasture are way down, but it hasn't hindered production. And then we have to look at the water that's leaving the farm. Now we're being held accountable for all these environmental damages, or the farmers are on the whole, but we can take a water sample as it leaves this pond, which takes in a 65 hectare segment of the farm. Now that water sample uh, was done two weeks ago, and it came in at 0 0.05 of a part per million of nitrate. Now, the maximum is 11.3, and there's many places in Canterbury that are actually at that, and we're only at 0 0.5. Now, I've got other farmers, another one did his at the same time, 0 .9, 0 0.09. So what it's showing is that you can grow feed, healthy feed, and be very, very profitable, but you've got to take a different approach to it. The whole thing about soil science and animal fertility, production, the whole thing, because you've got to have the information to do this. It's not just about throwing products on. And it's quite simple by taking the right soil samples, taking effective measures to see what's missing, the deficiencies, the toxicities, replacing those issues, get it back on the farm. And it usually costs about half of what most dairy farmers are actually spending at the moment. And for what result? Now, if we get paid for our carbon, which we've accumulated, um, measured, GPS, uh, we'll actually make more out of the carbon than we will out of the livestock production. It seems a bit daft, but you know, if that's what's required, we'll take it. But we're also producing healthy water that's leaving the farm, and the livestock, you know, there's ducks and there's geese and everything are coming on that too. It's not that difficult. It did take a while for us to work it out. But if you want to know a bit more about it, I've written a book about an eco-farmer's discovery, or you can have a look at our website. You might be looking at the website already. But take note, you can do something. We don't have to argue with government all day long about their restrictions. It's actually about getting the information and tell them, get stuffed, I've already done it, and I'm enjoying it.